Okay, Google. How do you say you're a giant Nazi bastard in Nazi? God damn it, Google! Oh, oh. <laughs> it's like that, is it? All right. Okay, Google. How do you say eat a giant bag of uncircumcised dicks in Jew? Uh, yeah, I'm staying out of this one. Coming up on Linux Gamecast Weekly, a serious Linux crisis, Valve makes with the source something about archery and alpha all the things. Then we throw the chairs at Little Racer Street. All this, plus your hate mail. Let's go. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Joining me every week, Mrs. Sveg. How's it going, buddy? Oh, not bad, friend. Oh, that's great, buddy. And all the way from Porto, giggling with Reggie Doom, Mr. Mateus. I'm Vin Stone, an LGC actual, switching the boards, doing the things, and we're also joined by you, Shatrilm Dynamic. If you're not watching us live, you should be. Get in there, scream in our direction. We will probably scream back at some point, but... Yeah, um, that's, that's hash no LGC promises. weekly on Freenode. <laughs> or something like that. It's brilliant. Horrible place. The worst pe I mean, the best, most loving... We're, we're, we're a bunch of harmless little fuzzballs. Uh, just mm, hug him. So what have you guys been up to this week, um, P-Man? Uh, have you been installing Linuxes? Yes, I have. I, In order to make good on my word, I actually took Chapeau Linux out for a ride this week. And first thing I tried was to install XFCE to get rid of GNOME 3 in the live session. I was greeted by a dependency error regarding multi-lib versions means someone fucked up an update. And then when I finally tried to install it to my hard drive, it, Anaconda immediately nooped out. Your Anaconda. Like, an unknown didn't error want has a call. Hold, hold, hold on. What, what kind of moon hardware was this running? Uh, it was on my nine-year-old desktop PC with an NVIDIA 5600. Mmm. So, J-Man, have you had any fun? You saw the Robocops. I, I saw the Robocop, and I got a new toy. Oh, yeah. Right. For mass surveillance. I got a Nexus 7. Ooh, neat. Because they're shutting down the Nexus line, so i got to get my hands on some hardware before it goes way too expensive. But, yeah, I saw a Robocop. It was all right. Meh. It, it, it's, it's, it's its own thing. Don't try and keep it in the context of the original film. Pretty decent. And over here, nothing fun, nothing extraordinary. I did sign an NDA that I can't oh. talk about, so not even with these <laughs> clouds. Yeah. Indeed. Fun stuff. So, um, J-Man, tell the people where they can rub their nipples. They can rub their nipples at, <laughs> rub their nickels yes. at linuxgamecast.com. Click on the podcast link. Click on our RSS feed so you can find us at Chat Realm Statically Linked, Facebooks, and YouTube as well. And if you love this train wreck and you love us, you should give us money. I like how it just completely goes off script. Go ahead. No, <laughs> I did not. But I can hear myself, so that's kind of throwing me off. Just a bit. Just a little bit. Yes. But continuing on from where I was going, yes, reddit.com slash r slash Linux underscore gaming is an awesome place. But, right, give us money. Back to the important part. You can click <laughs> on our donate buttons, make a one-time donation, and join the glorious Linux gaming PC gaming master race. Or you can give us a recurring donation and get your name in our little credits here. Look at that wall of shame. It's wonderful. But if you don't have any money, you can spread the word. You can do something cool related to LGC. Some clown last week made an XBMC plugin, so that's certainly a thing. But then I heard uh, a friend of ours got hacked. Well, uh, get, gather around, <laughs> chillings, because we're going to be talking about um, Kickstarter. 
And, um, yeah, they got the shit busted, man. Um, important Kickstarter security notice. You're fucked. Um, there will really have no credit card data of any kind was accessed by the hackers. No evidence of unauthorized activity of any kind. See, when I see something like this, I'm like, then why, why are you telling me all this? You know? Just saying that about that. But you might want to go to your Kickstarter page if you've donated some wet, stinky caches in their direction to any project. Change some of that business around because we probably won't find out what really happened until about until three months too late. down the road. And yep. I'm sure this will absolutely further push back the development of Carmageddon reincarnation because reasons. No, they have to go back and redo the entire concept art. Well, yep. yeah. Too much that got hacked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, that's definitely a thing. But, um, I heard we had some videos of the horse this week. I mean, just... Yeah, they, they posted that horse all over YouTube. It's our Steam Linux! Update of the week. You guys are completely out of sync this week. Steamworks yes. development. Yep. Tell me about it, J-Man. I've never heard of it. Yeah, Steamworks development on YouTube. They posted a bunch of the Steam Dev Days talks. That was my background noise for most of this week. Well, a couple interesting talks. Uh, Iculus's was particularly noteworthy. Both of them. And uh, there, there was this one that I thought Pedro would like about optimizing... Uh, games for AMD's proprietary drivers using their own wonderfully designed tool. Yeah, that particular tool. You know what? It's a real shame that they, they don't use it to actually test their own freaking drivers. No. And <laughs> if you if you look at the video, the AMD talk, you'll see that they're using a 5800 series calculator board instead of their... Um, flagship r9 or r7 boards so uh, amd why why are you lying so much to people because right. they love you so i did enjoy um ryan c's talk um with sdl because he basically went to you know several developers out there and he's like listen it will not eat your children I, I love yeah, the no. myth-busting section. That was... That was yep. Yeah, my, my favorite thing is like, good for the this is how you draw a window. I was like, <laughs> yes. Oh, oh I, for, I, I forgot to include error checking. <laughs> right. So That's the, another three whole lines. That was definitely brilliant. But I like most of the talks. But also, and that came up through this, is something uh, Valve given back, maybe? Yeah, Valve Software. Yeah, this Valve, is, uh, Valve has... Well, they've kept true to their commitment to open sourcing stuff, and they've open sourced the Steamworks VR API, which, according to the Twitter nets, is essentially Star Trek holodeck level technology, if the hype is to be believed. I don't think so, but it's good to see them honoring their commitment to open source, and I am pretty curious to see what comes out of it, though probably nothing. Not too many people own yeah. Oculus. Is... But and hey, again, people Valve, don't like having shit point... strapped to their face. Valve at this point has contributed more to open source than Ubuntu ever did. I know it's well, kind of nuts. That, that, that's not saying much. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't take a lot. I, I I included the GPL. I've I've contributed to open source more than Ubuntu. But, but anyways, time to get crying. Well, maybe, possibly. Theory. I mean, I'm sure there's a post on Phronix from four years ago that says. Crisis confirmed, uh, but no, this did show up on the Steam database this week. It's Crytek SDK Software Development Kit Supported Systems Penguin. Usually means Linux. Sometimes on alternate Wednesdays, it can mean far stranger things, but... Like BIOS. Take from this yeah. what you will. I, I think we've all heard rumors and rumblings of certain games that are currently in the works of being ported using the cry engine um blood dragon yeah something like that <laughs> and uh, i'm looking forward to it but i wonder if they'll actually go back and we'll, we'll get all the crisis series because uh, uh, that, that, that would be nice but it would that be would nice. happen years later yeah and do you really need another benchmarking game on linux yes absolutely <laughs> How else do the Arch users pronounce their superiority? 
<laughs> oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> so, but that's a definite thing. But take a shot in the dark. Come on. Just taking a shot in the dark and saying that probably archery or quapably archery because that's what it is. It's quap with bows and arrows and cricket bats apparently. So, surgeon simulator. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Octo simulator, simulator, simulator of archery. Pop. Yeah, so it uh, the the that actually makes the archery look <laughs> relatively uh, organic, and right. it seems like it works. But as soon as you fire up the game, you realize that yeah, you're basically playing surgeon simulator. Only instead of sur surgic tools, you're using um, a gun, a bow and arrow. Garden and people have bombs on their head. How neat, but if you're wondering about this, 25% off, it's eight ninety nine. Manipulate your wrist, elbows, shoulders, the arrow, da 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 da. This it looks like looks somebody like said, I'm going to make another version of Gary's mod, except with um, pointy shooty things. So, it needs a wee mode. then again, <laughs> this also leads me to go, this got greenlit how? But I have no fucking clue, but then the, again, it's green light. That, that's a story for another day, because <laughs> we need to talk about my two favorite things, and that's hipster pixel graphics and, um, oh, what's this? Oh, yay! Early access! Woohoo! <laughs> oh, gag me all the spoon. Um, so you know it's just going to be the best game ever. You can tell, look at this, man. Explore, craft, survive in this multiplayer RPG platformer with permanent death. Wow. So, so roguelike Terraria. Yeah, I remember, J-Man, you, you sent that comic a couple of weeks back about mm, yeah. how do we do a game? And it was like, oh, this is all the same tropes over and over and over again. And the game developer says, with um, retro-inspired graphics and everyone's throwing money at him. So just don't. <laughs> I I played this growing up. P-Man, do you got any thoughts about this? You had some uh, notes on I it? I do. This is King Arthur's Gold. It already, It's a game that already exists, and they're making another one because I don't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. J-Man, are you, you going to play the bejesus out of this? Not really. I mean, it could go either way, but as long as it's early access, I'm not going to waste money on it. No, yeah. I'm not looking forward to that, but it is... But it's uh, time to get grim. 9.99. Grim as that is. Grim. Duh. Grim duh. Griminde. Grimin Griminde. Um, Grimine? Grimine? Uh, I, I don't know. You're a psychotic meth-fueled porcupine. Um, <laughs> sent out on a mission to kill Space Hitler. Wait, no, that uh, I'm making all that up because it's not true. I'd play the hell out of that. I would too, but yep. we're stuck with Grimmed is a 2D physics-based adventure platform game. Horror, creepy theme, that means shit's dark and you have to cut up your gamma. Um, something without memories, obstacles, and puzzles. Currently 15% off, 8.49. I remember playing this game probably almost two years ago when it was um in beta. Looks neat, but I, I hear it has some control issues. Yeah, as, as as in it has no <laughs> controller support at all. Well, under it, it's it's a platformer. If you if you ship your platformer without controller support, you fail. Jordan, Jordan, it has controller support. Xbox 360 under Windows. I mean, can't you be under un, under, under Windows? Oh, well, <laughs> can't can't you be happy with that? Wonderful. I mean, come on. I mean, no, no, because like I, I I don't run this Moon operating system. It's way too advanced for me. <sighs> P man, I, talk I, talk I, some I sense into this man. I can't man. get it I mean, working. <laughs> Yeah, so in case you get the game and your controller doesn't work, don't freak out. It doesn't work under Linux at all. It might show up on the options menu, and it might seem like everything is okay, but it doesn't. It really doesn't work. And to tell you the truth, the game is basically limbo without all the lovely child murdering simulation. Damn, oh, that right. sucks. So that's grimmed. We might be taking a look at that. In full force, throwing some chairs at it in the future. Currently, as I said, it's eight forty nine. What sticky caches and partial controller support? What they mean by that is what P Man said. It's an option under Linux. It just doesn't work. You know, it's like there is like. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, that horse needs to um take off a little VR headset, doesn't he, Jamin? Yeah, it's. I think it's done buffering. We have, we have it here in full. 
Although, it does smell a little burned. I think it's got something to do with the fact that it's celebrating its first anniversary. Yeah, well, you know, uh, yeah, we, it's we, a bit we've been beating that for a while. Beating that horse yep. for over a year now. Over we a should, year. We should get it a cake. <laughs> You're cake. a cake. The cake is a lie. I'm a cake. To the news. And now, with the stench of the charred remains of our horse, come the news. Not so steamy, but still important. So, Jordan, tell us about Godot. Well, Godot. It's Godot. Godot, Godot has finally been open sourced, <laughs> and I can I can say for all the theater nerds out here, we are no longer waiting for Godot. Crickets. Chirp, chirp, chirp. What is Godot? <laughs> it is a 2D, 3D game engine that is MIT licensed. Um, has a visual editor, has some um, well, animations and whatnot. It's basically a game development suite, uh, completely open source uh, under the MIT license, as I said before. Then you took a look at this. Yeah, I looked at it. The visual editor and all that business was pretty fun. I enjoyed tinkering with it i spent almost an hour with it not really doing anything other than it's like hmm if i wanted to make a really simple side scrolly thing and got to the point where i was just like you know what Ven, put it down i, I, I like <laughs> how they say oh yeah you, we integrate with git perfectly that's do most things <laughs> well yeah uh, now the, there's one thing i mean it's the binary distribution 64-bit only but it is source you can build it yourself if you want to run 32-bit yeah. It's not that big a deal. That's something I definitely wish had existed, you know, billions of years ago when I was a child, because I would have loved something like this to futz with. And, no, I, you know, it supports animation rigging, the whole 2D, 3D, you name it. And you can yeah. export out to, you know, Mac and that other operating system. Yeah, it's, it's always it nice to see native good quality in Linux. cross-platform game development tools come out the wet works. It is, it's, because, you know, Unity's taking its bothering sweet time <laughs> getting around to that. Yeah. yeah, how long have people been asking for a native Linux Unity editor? Year. It's, ever since... Year. Ever since <clears throat> Unity... Yeah, about a year. Where the hell is it? Come on. Anyway, Listen, that man, easy to it's a Unity game to Linux. <laughs> it's complicated, man. We can't handle voxels. Right. Yeah, apparently. Or proper garbage collection. <laughs> but check that out. It's go.engine.org. Good day. Free as in beer. Go make some beautiful games. Show them Send to Send them your to friends. us, and we'll throw chairs at them. Yep. <laughs> so we're, we're going to be talking alpha, all the things. Alpha, mm. all the things. Ven, why don't you start us with the first one? Oh, <laughs> boy. Alpha registration. So, you know, I was reading about this. And what is this? Uh, well, well, let's just take a look at this video. It, to me, it's um, Minecraft with the high-res texture pack. It's a destructible environment. And that's pretty much it. Uh, so it's yeah, it's, 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 an, it's another one of these game engines... It is it is voxel based, but it's not as blocky as Minecraft. I think Ben is a bit over. Nah, he's, yeah, this is pretty much like HD Minecraft. Let's uh, go with that. Uh, HD Minecraft. I mean, uh, the idea of the project is to write a game engine that supports huge, procedurally generated worlds and destructible terrain. I thought Notch took care of that. Um, yeah, no. but this this is pretty. <laughs> no, no, no. This I love. There are currently only very few projects featuring destru. What? <laughs> Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait to sell yourself. No one's using our shit, but you should. So, yeah, they even mentioned that. Uh, we also think games like Minecraft, Terraria, Gary's Mod represent a new genre of. Wait, wait, wait. So, what's the ultimate goal here? Rust? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't know. Technically, this destructible at this point. It, it depends on the quality of more... their caveman penis. I mean, to be honest yeah. with you. <laughs> no, no, you, you, you need to perfectly simulate cock physics if you want to make an open world it's, procedurally generated it's game. It's more along the lines of Star Forge without the sci fi thing. Mm. Well, anyway, yeah. you can request an alpha key. That's a thing. Beta it's or madness. alpha. No? Hey, check it out. Scream in our direction if you get into it. I'm just not going to be bothered. 
to do it, but it might be something completely made of awesome sauce, but I would almost vote against that. But Alpha, and all the things, people. Thinking. It's, yeah. it's madness. Madness. <laughs> it's crazy. So speaking of things that may be awesome and people have no idea about, here comes Monster Madness, and it's now an Alpha. It's an Unreal Engine 3 MMO, and it comes, the Linux version, after you've signed up, it comes packed as a dev file. Uh, so it will require some library juju if you're running anything other than Ubuntu 12.04, because that's what juju, they're targeting, which is good in a way, but my machine that I have running Ubuntu 12.04 has a really old NVIDIA card, and it can't compile the shaders. So as soon as the launcher goes away, it's dead, Jim. And on my calculator with the open source drivers, guess what? It's Unreal Engine 3. Doesn't work either. So, no <laughs> surprise, something made in the future doesn't work in the past. Um, I downloaded it played with it it's definitely one of those things where you get the launcher then it downloads its bits and i'm like okay that's fine then it starts and it's like oh we have to stream all the graphics and content you know it's like oh that's gonna take forever signed up got into it and the first thing you notice is like all oh, right this is this is gonna be a freemium game this is gonna be a not a pay to play but a pay to win type deal i mean they haven't implemented any of that but it is clearly obvious. I didn't really futz around with it a whole lot. It looks decent. I mean, it's Unreal 3. So, um, the art style really reminds me of, like, Dungeon Keepers, but I'm just saying as far as the color of... It's a bit, it's a bit cell shady. Yeah. Yeah. So, eh. uh, uh, the It's doing the best that Unreal 3 can. <laughs> aging engine is aging, but you can check that out at Monster Madness. Don't come. That's a thing. Doesn't cost anything. Nah. And, uh, well, and we should mention, as always, that if you want to find out what we're talking about, you can always click these links in the show notes located on the podcast page for this yep. particular episode. So this kind of came out of nowhere. A. Unity. Unity. But Hello. Dear Aster and Unity, you might remember Dear Aster as, well, it wasn't uh, really a game. Um, oh, well, it, it was the first in these sort of wander around exploration neo mist type games yeah so the developer of it uh, had puzzles right true enough <laughs> has been playing around here it is actually running on the unity side of things and you're wondering you know well, what was it well, originally it was source and I, I didn't realize the cocked up state of the source engine until i read through this post and apparently as the guys you know they handed it off to get it ported running on mac and linux and there was some BS middleware in there that they get charged for, so they actually got hosed on the Linux port. But I was kind of uh, thinking, that, oh, they want to continue developing this. And I was like, well, that's, that's kind of neat, P-Man. You had some thoughts? Yeah, the whole thing, I read through the whole article, and all I kept seeing was, we didn't use SDL and had our wallets raped by licensing fees. Well, <laughs> You should have listened to Ryan yeah. C. Gordon. Use SEL, <laughs> period. Yeah, but they actually, uh, the, the, the native port was done by the guys behind Nuclear Dawn. Uh, hmm. the, they also, uh, but no, no, they also no, no, commissioned no. another port. Code Weavers to... was behind this port. Well, the yeah, original no, port they, was they Code also... Weavers. I mean, that <laughs> port. Why? <laughs> <laughs> they also commissioned that other port to Codemasters. And they okay. ported it with Code Weavers as crossover. So that's why they asked the Nuclear Dawn guys to actually do a native port. And the native port actually works for what it is. I played through it and I didn't see any of the uh, bugs they mentioned. Although I am curious with the move to Unity and its unoptimized mess, uh, how will that affect the game's performance? Because it ran swimmingly on my end. Well, I mean, a lot of, you know, everyone complains on the Unity side is, uh, you know, how come it has all that micro stutter? And that's because it has a very outdated garbage collection system that everyone's been bitching about for the past year. But even the current generation port we have right now is kind of a bit shit as far as um, graphics performance, because it can get really laggy at some points when you jerk around. I think J-Man <laughs> Legends of Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> 
But that's a thing. It's for Unity. Well, I like to see. I'm curious as how they're going to continue the story because I never made it to the end. Everyone's like, eh, play it to the end, and I was like, no, mm-mm. Eh, I'm bored. Yeah. yeah, I got to the end, and uh, eh, I, it's I, a story. I got maybe like thirty minutes in, and I'm just like, okay, I've I've had enough of this. <laughs> well, one thing I haven't had enough of is racing, and one thing I've always wanted was. A racing arcade style game on Linux, and I think, just maybe, somebody's going to give us a proper one. Let's find maybe, out. Maybe, you professional racist. Well, you know that Mr. Stone and Mr. Mateus are both pretty big racists. So this week, we're throwing some chairs at Little Racers Street. It's by Milkstone Studios. It's done in the Quasar engine, which is really just XNA and mono game. It is $7.99 or $5.99 euros. And it's a little arcade racer thingy that goes woo 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 as you race your vehicle through a track. That's it's basically it's a racing game. How else can I describe it? So well, there's only one thing left to do, and that's cue the chair explanation. Yes. So we rate everything on a four-chair metric based on four categories. One chair means that it's shit. Two chairs means that it's meh. Three chairs means that it's pretty good. And four chairs means that Pedro will not stop talking about it for the next two weeks. We also have our categories Odoom, mixed with the working. How does it work? How does it run? General operations on the Linux operating system. Shiny and sounds, oral, auditory... Visual goodness, it's all about that stuff. And controls are self-explanatory, as is fun. So, then, Little Racers Street. You've been asking for a racing game for so long under Linux. Does this game, is it, well, is it up to snuff? Does it make with the working? No, does it make with the working? Now, this is something that we have to look at, like, right now. Because if you had asked me this a week ago, no, nothing really made with a working at all whatsoever. I mean, it launched. I'll give it that. But it was like a ginormous cock tease. It was like, yeah, hey, everyone was having issues. Do you want to play? Do you want to play? And I was like, yes, oh, I would like to play. And they're like, <laughs> too bad. So um, when it comes to make with a working, uh, the developers actually said this the previous week. And they, they said, in the next update, we will try, quote unquote, to generate a debug log when the game crashes so they can help sort out some of the issues because when this thing launched, it was genuinely busted. Um, so, it, but right now, as of recording, it works, but it still has issues. We'll talk more about that in the controls. So, uh, really all I can give it you know, in fairness, it's going to be two chairs. J-Man. Oh, well, hang on. Now. That no, was no, on no, our no. base test no. system. 1204 LTS 32-bit no. 770. All right. Well, you know what? Ben tries. Oh, my God. Does he try? Anyways, on our Fedora 20 powered AMD 1090T 670 super clock powered box here because i didn't test it on the amd box because that was being co-opted by my roommate who's been playing some playstation 3 game i don't know it's something about lightning no idea anyways on the nvidia power test box uh worked pretty well aside from all the menus being completely misaligned initially they've they've since fixed it but i mean come on man you're releasing a game don't save all the QA until after people have given you money. So you get you get three chairs for being pretty good, but come on, guys. At least you fixed your issues. So I'm the odd man out on this one because on the calculator with an AMD 5650HD with an Intel i3 CPU, it ran out of the box. On my nine-year-old desktop PC with an NVIDIA 5600GS, and an, uh, an Intel Dual Core E6400, it also ran out of the box. So, four chairs for me. <laughs> wow. That's quite the gamut of chairs for Mix with the Working. Totals up to three chairs as a total for Mix with Working. Shiny and sounds. Ven, did this tickle your eye pussies? Uh, let's take a look at this. Your, your pussies. 
Uh, I'm talking about a uh, rather aged Xbox 360 game, so I kind of came in expecting that. And to be perfectly honest, there's, there's really nothing visually impressive with this game, but I, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. What I was expecting as wouldn't... Because I assume all the textures and everything was meant for the 720p display of the original Xbox 360... At 1080p, it just looks like a stretched out mess. I visually looks better at 720 in a window than stretched out at 1080. Nothing terribly impressed by this. Um, some of the modes, when you get behind the car, you can really see that, yes, yeah, so there are textures, but that's about it. And we're talking about running this on Ultra. And that's another thing with the shiny and sounds. The sounds, they're there, but I cut them down because I don't really want to listen to anything other than other people screaming at me, or myself screaming for <laughs> running into things. I'm like, no! Ow! Ah! Quit! Arr. So, that's a thing. Um, eh, I don't know what I was expecting, but a little bit more than what, what was delivered. So, I'm just going to give it a one chair for that. Uh, not impressed. J-Man? Yeah, I wasn't too impressed with the audio and the visuals either. I mean, really, they were all just bland. The game is not remarkable in any sense for for sounds and and video, but can't give it one chair because they at least it was, the cars at least looked like cars. The tracks looked like <laughs> tracks. It, it it worked. It's not great, so it gets a middle of the road score. It gets two chairs. Again, I'm the odd man out because uh, this is Micro Machines. It's Micro Machines 2014. And the last time I played Micro Machines was on this thing. Yeah, that's the Game Boy Color you're looking at right there. Uh, the graphics on this thing were not particularly impressive. The graphics on this game and the fact that the game ran as smoothly as it did, at least for me, uh, I really have no complaints. And... Also, bonus points for having a variety of camera angles that actually bring out the best in the game. Four chairs for me. Okay, okay. I just, I just need to understand this for a second. You are giving it a very good score based on the fact that it has better graphics than a Game Boy Color. <laughs> it has Truly, better this graphics is the than future. any Micro Machines technology. game ever released. <laughs> It what had kind of better technology graphics is than any Micro Machines computers. game ever released. You can't released. play games on computers. <laughs> They're for business applications and COBOL. <laughs> but anyways, that's uh, it's two chairs for shiny and sounds. Next is Control. Ven, I know you like getting a little drunk behind the wheel. Did it feel like you were drunk behind the wheel? You know, at first, when, when it first started out, it... it wasn't bad. The controls worked when we first started playing it. The problem is, was the micro stuttering made the controls useless because it was completely unplayable. Then, um, me and J-Man did a multiplayer thing, and it spent a good ten minutes of watching me stuck with the handbrake on constantly, just, you know... <laughs> I am the least worst racist! <laughs> basically, man. Um, no, but seriously, I mean, the controls were... You know, I thought, okay, that's going to be fixed. But no, <laughs> they were just fucking with me. So, what actually, now the handbrake bug in multiplayer is kind of fixed. I'm still seeing it from time to time. I ran into it last night, but uh, completely better than last week. For the x controller, remapping the controls, they work. I'm happy with that. But then again, you still run into that handbrake always on on occasion. Sometimes that can be sorted just by going in, reassigning, then re-reassigning. But, uh, yeah, that's a bit of a trouble, so I can't give it a perfect score on that. But currently, right now, as it stands, solid three chairs with the controls. J-Man. I do not play racing games. I think the only two racing games... Actually, no, the only three racing games I liked were Hydro Thunder for the N64, Kinetica for the PlayStation 2, and Mario Kart. So I'm not probably the best person to ask about racing game controls, because my exposure to them has been horrifically limited. However, um, 
despite some initial issues at first, I got the hang of them. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know what to say for this category. I have no real basis for comparison. So I'm just going to go with the score. safe bet. I'll give it two chairs. The controls work. Do they work particularly well? I'm not the person to ask. Maybe this guy is. Uh, yeah, so on my end, the uh, PS2 DualShock controller worked out of the box. Didn't need to reassign anything. All the controls made sense for once. And to me, that's a very, very good thing because most racing games nowadays like to have some weird-ass controller config for some reason. And this one, everything worked out of the box. Didn't see a need to use the... Uh, the keyboard or the mouse so i didn't even touch them while i was in game i think that's pretty good four chairs that brings us to three chairs for the control section and now finally our only subjective category fun then did you enjoy yourself ultimately kind of sort of um i, I say sort of yeah <laughs> Kind of, sort of, maybe. Maybe kind of, sort of. I don't know how exactly to put this together at this point. I mean, because it's been such a traumatic experience getting to a working game. and An emotional roller coaster, you'd say? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> and I, I'm not necessarily thinking about us. I, I'm thinking about, you know, people who've picked this game up over the past two weeks. And they got a really broken product that they've ended up, you know, getting in the forms and doing the QA and waiting for it to get fixed, and that, that's not something I really approve of. Uh, I, I Especially really for a paid game. I think these guys should yeah. ship a working product. Um, because here's how it neg negatively affected me, is by the time I was done futzing with it, and we actually sat down with everyone, and we played a multiplayer game, I, I was so sick of futzing with it, and I was like, yeah, all right, we're finally at where we should have been on day one. Then I'm like, yeah, this is a neat little game. Now I'm like, well, that it works now, kind of, mostly. Because, you know, it still stutters at 1080p on Ultra with a 770. No explanation for that whatsoever. And still having some handbrake issues, which does interfere with the fun. But it's not a complete shit at all. I mean, it's a fun game. And you got to remember, it's still stuck in the back of my head of all the time it has just been a pain in the ass. So, I'm going to give it a meh, just in all fairness. That is being heavily influenced. You know, I would definitely have given a third chair if I'd had the experience. We had a couple of nights back from the go. Flawless. Right. J -Man, Flawless victory. What do you think? Oh, hey, my, my, my network connection decided to settle down. But racing games aren't really my thing. Like I said, I listed the four racing games I actually do enjoy earlier in the review. Uh, however, beating Ven in multiplayer as this game completely glitched out brings brings joy to what would normally be called a heart, but in me is some sort of show the black thing. I don't know what that the deal with that is. But anyways, uh, honestly, the 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 thing that kept me entertained for the most for my entire playthrough of the game with these clowns is the fact that uh, the love bus is basically so big and heavy. The one <laughs> strategy is get in front of the guy in the lead and then just let him push you. <laughs> yep. Jordan's a blocker. Uh, that's his love. Yep. Life. yep. So love bus, man. So unfortunately, just cause racing games aren't really my thing. I Maybe, maybe if it was working a lot better and maybe if we could get like a consistently good multiplayer experience, I'd give it a higher rating, but one chair with an asteroid. An asterisk it is. Me, on the other hand, I like racing games. I like a lot of different kinds of racing games, except for those uh, F1 type things. Yeah, those don't sit well with me, but I like this game. It could use a bit more variety when it comes to, you know, multiplayer games. It said it's just race, 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 race. You could have, like, capture the flag or, I don't know, something. Demolition different. Derby. Demolition Derby, yeah. Anything. Just give us some variety. And it... <laughs> 
the AI cheats like hell, and it made me throw this thing across the room three times in the first two hours. So it's frustrating as hell. But in the words of Yatsi Croshaw, angry gets shit done. Three chairs. All right. Well, that looks like it's going to be two chairs for fun. So we total this entire train wreck up and we get to our final score of two chairs, which if we go back to our chair simulation is meh. Not sure if want. The uh, experience for this game was pretty rocky from the get go. Uh, what could have been a solid little racing game is fraught with issue upon issue upon issue. So it may not be your thing if you do like racing games for Linux. According to these two guys, it's pretty fun, so check it out if you don't mind handbrake glitching. I don't know. Then, final thoughts? Final thoughts. I'm, I'm kind of with you. I mean, if you're a fan of, like, the top down, now, it does have multiple camera modes, but the one camera mode that I'd be looking for is, you know, almost directly behind your motoring vehicle, and that's a shit angle. I mean, you, just, you can't really play that way. They put that in there. I was like, isn't that neat? And I was like, uh, not really. So nope. you're going to be forced to play it with the top down. A um, couple of things with like the car thing. This is one thing Track Mania got right. They made all the cars the same. So you're actually playing against skill. These cars, yep. your selections, are so radically different. If you get used to your one car where you're curb stomping everyone, then you're like, hey, look, I have points. I'm going to upgrade. Then you get this new vehicle. It's like... Scratch everything that you know, and relearn how to do it from not um, for the price. I, I'd say pick it up. Expect some problems. Good on the developers for working on it. Bad on the developers for releasing something without properly testing it. P man. Yeah, it's not early access anymore. And judging by the amount of people that were actually having problems, and hey. Right here at LGC, we have Ven, which usually games for him just work out of the box and they work fine. I'm usually the one who has problems. And for once on my end, it worked fine. I had no problems whatsoever. But him and tons of other people on the Steam forums, as you can read, they, they released a broken game. They didn't do the proper testing. And I can see how that might turn some people off. but Again, they have fixed most of it, and they're still working on the game. So if you like racing games, and we all know that Linux is starved when it comes to the racing games, so pick it up if you like racing games. <laughs> are, are, but only if you like racing games. But, you know, if you like racing games, then you might like the street racers if you like racing games. But anyways, yeah. <laughs> coming up next. Our favorite segment, your favorite too, Hate Mail, live on air. And now, with those chairs neatly folded back into place, let's get into the Hate Mail. And just a quick note, if you're trying to promote your Indiegogo Kickstarter Steam Greenlight campaign, just, you know, when you push that contact button on linuxgamecast.com, make sure to include a link to your working Linux prototype. All right, so let's get into this. So first one up, Jordan, you've claimed this one. Derp. Oh, yeah, th th this is a wonderful and insightful comment from our <laughs> YouTube page from uh, last week's episode. This is from James Chatterton, and he says, I'm with David Brabin, which is just another poster from the oh i know that was the dude from the interview i'm an yeah. ubuntu user and the number of times i've tried to help or i've tried to get help to get a game working or some other software and the answers i get are it works for me edit this config file with no information on what to do with the file or where to find it or rebuild the software yourself i am a competent developer and i don't uh, have the oh, yeah. time to do what is required to make ubuntu work as a stable operating system and as for piracy yeah it's far easier it's just not done because no one gives a crap about linux gaming wow. <laughs> uh mr chatterton uh you're a complete fucking moron yep so uh pedro has his bit to say but i want to get my nitpicks out of the way first um first off again this devs are this whole linux is 
or Linux piracy is a lot easier because everything is open source it is complete crap. I hear people say this again and again and again, and no one provides any facts to back this up. Well, Microsoft didn't actually... provide any facts when they ran the FUD campaign, so they don't have. Yeah, any... I, well, that's that's true, but I mean, someone please give me some statistics that state that getting a pirated game for Windows is harder than getting a pirated game for Linux. I mean, if you even search pirated games Linux, you get freaking Torchlight from the Humble Bundle. Yeah. That then, like, what, maybe Quake 3. There, There's <laughs> not much in the way there. And, again, no one really pirates software on Linux, mainly because we have so little paid software that every time a little piece comes out, we buy it like crazy. Starvation. Uh, the, other thing, the other thing is, is, I mean, QA, come on. If 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 you're having trouble as a developer getting shit working, you're doing it wrong. You're just you're you're not a developer. Uh I had an earlier point. Yeah, and <laughs> honestly, um a lot of times with games not working under Linux, it's just really bad QA. People don't test their shit, as we discussed earlier in our review segment. Yep. And, and one uh, other thing, one little piece of required viewing for you. Go watch Iculus's talk on getting started porting Linux games because it smashes all the all your little pathetic reasons better than I could coming from the man who has ported more Linux games than anyone. Yeah, so, definitely watch the Iculus talk. There'll be a link for that in the show notes. So, you're a competent developer, hmm? As far as I can tell, Ubuntu is a pretty stable OS as long as you don't futz with it too much. If you think you need to futz with Ubuntu to make it stable, dude, you're doing something wrong. Uh, so you you and, really do need to fuck with Ubuntu to make it work, though. Eh, not really. Nowadays, Ubuntu works as long as you don't touch it in appropriate places. So then there's the piracy thing. Okay, tell you what. Go to the Pirate Bay download Neverwinter Nights for Linux and try to get it to run. My money's on it doesn't. It won't. Now, try and do that for Windows with the Windows version of Neverwinter Nights. Which one works? Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about piracy, and to me, it's it, it boils down to quality of service. Say, if you download a game and it just works, Okay, then maybe pirate, pirating it is better than actually buying a game that's riddled with draconian DRM that'll fuck you over when you're a paying customer. I can see that. I can respect that. But if when you buy a game like, say, from Steam, a native Linux game from Steam, and it works out of the box, what reason do you have to pirate it? Say so you want to play a wine game. You buy it from, okay, GOG. Chances are it's going to run out of the box under wine. Now try and pirate that game from some guy like Skid Row or really any pirating group. Chances are you're not going to be very successful running it under Windows. Uh, or in this case, wine, as the case may be. Wine can't launch all the fancy Trojans. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> and when it really, when it comes to Linux, legit digital distribution provides better quality service than piracy ever did and probably ever will. So, James Chatterton, you are a moron. No one likes you, and you are a waste of sperm. Up yep. next, Crystal Catacombs. Pedro, this is yours. Yep. It's the Crystal Catacombs. Uh, you may remember the guys that made the Terabad uh, Raven Sword Shadow Realms, that Unity RPG so that everyone goth. panned. Yeah, so he sent us a note saying, Hey, Pedro, do you guys like Metroidvania-style games? And I said, Yeah, sure. And then he replied with an email saying, Here you go. Please help us get on Greenlight by streaming or YouTubing it. And he did include a link to the working uh, Linux prototype and so we are contractually obliged to show you their Steam Greenlight page. And there it is. Now, I got a little bit ready here. Uh, 
From the creators of the Terabat Raven Sword Shadowlands comes Ven's new favorite game, riddled with his favorite hipster pixel graphics, 2D platforming, and Metroidvania business. Well, check that business out. It's like Mother Blob, <laughs> except it looked worse than Mother Brain did on mother, the original. It's Mother. It's Mother Love. <laughs> mother Love. Yeah. Okay. Except it's more pixely than the original NES. <laughs> um, you know, uh, extra pixels. Uh, I'm going to give it a fair shake. Uh, it launched. I'll give it that. Uh, I didn't have to change permissions to get it to launch. Good on you. Um, this was a Kickstarter from 2012. Yep. And apparently it's not completely out yet, maybe? Or they're, they're it just needs to the... be greenlit, apparently. Right. <laughs> I, I'm not going to hate on it until I play it, because, you know, it does kind of remind me of, you know, a little bit of... Uh, you know, Metroid, especially with Mother Heart, Mother Love. You know, a bit of Soviet Russia going on there. It could be fun. And look, he's got a whip and a shield. Oh my god, it's Zelda with more pixels. Uh... <laughs> no, it's Zelda, Zelda 2, man. Zelda 2. Hey, I, I played the out of Zelda 2, all right? So, <laughs> we're going to give it a shake. Give him a plug. Yeah, go check it out. Yeah, the thing is, uh, you can't get really grab a demo for it, but, you know, click your jaw button, or nine, if you don't want to. <laughs> you know what, I, I'll, I'll say this about the demo. Xbox controller doesn't work. The, uh, the directional, the analog stick works, yeah. and that's about it. None of the buttons work, so you can't jump or mess about with your inventory. So, I say this to you developers, make with the fixing. Now! Yeah, I had the exact same experience on the PS2 DualShock. The directional, the D-pad, or if you're using the analogs, they work, but nothing else does. So that needs to get fixed before you guys get greenlit. Right. See, I, I didn't know that business. If it doesn't work with the X-Clone controller or anything like that, and it's a Metroidvania... Um, and, and it's a Unity game, so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, no jar for you. Only nine until that that business is sorted. But um, I think that's just going to get us set up just in time to cue that music because you've been listening to Linux Gamecast Weekly. We do this live every week and on Saturdays, usually around nine fifteen, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. As I'm always joined by my friends here. J Man and the P Man, and you, Shad Room. So uh, I guess um, uh, 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 the um, end of the day, we, we can just hold non functioning semi controls and make some handbrake noises. <coughs> 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 Get the jaws of life!